I'm Andrea Sachs from Time Magazine. We're here today with Dr. Jane Goodall, the renowned primatologist who's known worldwide for her studies of chimpanzees in the Gombe Reserve in Tanzania. Dr. Goodall has written a wonderful new book, Hope for Animals in Their World, How Endangered Species Are Being Rescued from the Brink. Dr. Goodall, nice to see you. Good to see you. And Kantesh Guttal in Pune, India asks, how can you be so empathetic with the chimps? I think one is either an empathetic person or not. Some people are very uh, non-caring to other people, and some people just seem to care about animals and not people. And fortunately, I realize, learning from the chimpanzees, how we are part of the animal kingdom. The chimpanzees teach us that. There isn't a sharp line dividing us. And so the kind of empathy that I feel for people is the kind of empathy that I feel for chimpanzees. Okay, do they have a dark and brutal side to their nature? Yes, so do people. And it comes out in the most unexpected situations. But by and large, chimpanzees show far more frequently tendencies of compassion and empathy and love than they do of violence and brutality. Which do you like better, chimps or humans? Uh, chimps are so like us that I like some chimpanzees much better than some humans, and some humans much better than some chimpanzees. There's no question. Hayu Kim in Seoul, Korea asks, what was the most touching moment that in your time with the chimps? Is there a particular... Well, there are two. One was uh, when I was following David Graybeard, the first chimp to lose his fear, following him through the forest in the very early days. And he suddenly veered through a very tangly, thorny clump of vegetation. I was crawling after him and, you know, getting <clears throat> thorns in my, catching my clothes and everything. So I gave up. I thought, well, he'll have disappeared. But when I got through, he was sitting as though waiting. And so I sat near him. And there was a <clears throat> ripe red palm nut on the ground. Picked it up because chimps love them. Held it out towards him. He turned his face away. So I put my hand closer. And he turned, he looked directly in my eyes. He reached out, he took the nut. He didn't want it, he dropped it, but he very gently squeezed my hand, which is how chimpanzees reassure each other. So that was like a, a communication that probably, for us, predates words. And the other one was when Flo, who also lost her fear quite early on. She has this little infant who's just learning to walk. He's about five months old, and she trusts me so much but when he totters towards me and reaches out, she doesn't snatch him away like she used to, but she just keeps her hand protectively around him and she lets him reach out to touch my nose. And this was just so magic. Specialist Mackenzie Baker at Camp Taji in Iraq asks, how do you work with so many animals and not get overly attached to them? Well, I've always been very attached to the animals I work with. And although a scientist is supposed to be subjective and <clears throat> lack in empathy, I've always felt that this is wrong. Fortunately, there's a growing number of other scientists who feel the same. And it's the empathy that you feel with an animal, not a subject, but an animal, a living individual being, that really helps you to understand. The science comes in when you say, okay, I think because I feel this empathy that that behavior must mean something. And then, then you can use your, your scientific training to ask the questions and find out if your intuition is correct. What's your position on people who have chimps as pets, given the implications for violence, such as the woman in Connecticut whose chimpanzee attacked her neighbor? It's absolutely wrong to have a chimpanzee as a pet, or any of the primates for that matter, and most other exotic species too. Chimpanzees, yeah, when they're little, they're cute, and people have them as surrogate children. But by the time they reach early adolescence, they're already as strong as a human. And chimpanzees are completely unpredictable. You cannot predict what will trigger a sudden anger or rage. And so we're actually, the Jane Goodall Institute is fighting very hard for legislation that will prohibit people owning other non-human primates as pets. Very rare can they give them a good life. Why should we sell 
our closest living relatives as a pet. It's not a pet, it's an individual, it's its own uh, way of living and it's not suited to live in our houses. Now Chet Kim in Birmingham, Michigan asks, you've chosen to spend more time with animals yet you have hope for humanity. What do you see in animals that you don't see in us? <laughs> well that's a kind of loaded question isn't it? Um, animals by and large are not destroying their environments, although some of them would if they could. But they've evolved so that there's a natural balance. And typically when an animal species uh, starts overpopulating an area, something happens, as it used to with humans, to bring that down, to be in balance with the natural world. But now, because of modern medicine, um, human populations are spiraling, mushrooming out of control. So. Um, the question I always ask is, how does this most intellectual species that's ever walked the planet, how, how is it that we're destroying our only home? And I think there's a disconnect between the clever brain and the seat of love and compassion, the human heart. And what we have to do is to link the heart with the brain again. And let us move forward understanding that this life is about a lot more than just making money. And we should not be living for money, we need money to live. So that's why I'm working so uh, hard with youth to create a critical mass of young people with this philosophy. That's my hope for the future.